So I'm a physician assistant. I currently practice in Hamilton. I work in physiatry. Um, I work with one supervising physician in quite a busy physiatry practice, both at the Hamilton General and at McMaster. So I did my undergraduate education at McMaster um, in kinesiology, so that was a four-year Bachelor of Science degree. After that, I took a gap year and worked in research, focusing on um, multiple sclerosis and physical activity. And that was kind of when I figured out what I wanted to do with my my career. Um, after that year of research, I applied to the PA program and started my uh, PA journey in 2015. And were you contemplating other careers at the time? Yeah, so uh, actually since a very young age I knew I wanted to be in medicine. I just didn't know what capacity that was, so doing kinesiology was kind of natural for me. I had a history and background in sports and physical activity and was very interested in that kind of profession. And naturally after kinesiology there's kind of a few things that you can uh, focus on. So chiropractic, um, care, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, being a kinesiologist, medical school and a couple of other different career paths. I always thought that, that I was going to go to medical school, so I actually wrote my MCAT, applied to med school a couple of times until I found out about the PA program. So it was in that gap year that I met a PA and was able to shadow her and thought, wow, this career is really excellent and I think it's something that I'm quite well suited to. So that's kind of what led me to the PA profession and I'm so happy that I ended up here. What was your experience like uh, for PA school? So I found the McMaster program uh, amazing. I wasn't sure what problem-based learning would entail. Um, coming from Mac Kinesiology, we did a lot of tutorial small group work. So I was already kind of um, uh, had had that experience, but I, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel in full problem-based learning. Now, the first couple of months was very difficult. You really had to adjust a lot of independent self-learning, but I found that when you figured out how to do that, it was exponentially better than um, my undergrad experience, which was typically just didactic lecture style uh, learning. So I really enjoyed PBL because I found that everyone was able to bring something different to the table. Um, once you learn how you can study and, and what you can give to your peers in a small group, I, I found that I came out with the knowledge and skills that were kind of lifelong uh, and beneficial for my career. And um, where did you do your clinical rotations in? Um, in second year, so in clerkship. Well, I was kind of all over, so I did a few in Hamilton, but I also was in Whitby for psychiatry, I was in Toronto for Emerge, I was in Cambridge for family medicine, Hamilton for general surgery, um, and then for my electives, I, I went back to Toronto actually for an emergency elective, did an elective at my current workplace uh, in Hamilton at the Regional Rehab Centre, and I went abroad as well over to India for an elective. <sighs> did you know where you wanted to work while you were going through PA school? Uh, I knew what specialty I wanted to work in. I was um, always interested in kind of uh, orthopedics, neurosurgery, or physiatry. I had had early exposure to physiatry in my undergrad. Um, I worked at the Mac Wheeler Spinal Cord Injury Rehab Center, and all of the people that I worked with had physiatrists. So I had kind of early exposure to that, and it was right along in keeping with my kinesiology degree and things that I was interested in. So I kind of was debating between the three of them, and then when I was able to do placements in physiatry, I, I kind of had my heart set on that from the beginnings. And uh, what was your process for finding your first job? So I did um, a longitudinal placement at the Regional Rehab Centre with a physiatrist. Um, we set up four half days and I ended up going for about eight half days because I was so interested and really enjoyed the clinical experience. It was in the amputee and prosthetic uh, kind of division at the Rehab Centre. And I then set up an elective at the Rehab Centre. So um, that was a four-week elective and I ended up working with about seven different physiatrists. So I got experience on the acute brain injury ward, on the spinal cord injury ward, with amputees and prosthetics, with sports medicine, and general musculoskeletal medicine. So I got to know a number of the different practitioners there and um, at the end of my elective, uh, essentially one of the physiatrists approached me and said, you know, I'm interested in a PA, is this something that you think we could talk about? 
How would you describe or define physical medicine and rehabilitation as a specialty? Mm -hmm. So that's a good question because a lot of people have not heard of physiatry. So um, physical medicine and rehabilitation is kind of a broad specialty that can encompass a number of different um, subspecialties within it. So as I kind of mentioned, you can focus on sports medicine, general musculoskeletal medicine, spinal cord injury, um, ABI, amputees and prosthetics, or um, spasticity management. So there's a lot within that kind of overall title. Physiatrists tend to pick a few of those domains and then specialize in them. Um, so it, it kind of depends who you're working with, what you will see. Mm -hmm. And how is a physiatrist different than an orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine, or neurologist? Yeah, that's a great question. So physiatry is a, a non-operative specialty. So people often come to me and say, oh, you're going to do the surgery, but I have to make it very clear that we are uh, conservative management, non-operative. So that's how we differ from orthopedics or how we differ from uh, an orthopedic surgeon. So we work quite closely with orthopedic surgeons actually to manage their patients conservatively, either prior to surgery or after surgery. Um, however, we would not do uh, a surgery ourselves. And it's kind of a, a combination of um, non-operative ortho management and uh, neurology uh, kind of mixed together. So we focus on both the um, kind of neurological system, but the musculoskeletal system combined and look at the person kind of as a whole presentation and can see uh, multiple different uh, types of patients because of the broad scope of physiatry. What other treatment modalities can physiatry uh, offer? Mm -hmm. So um, in my clinic, we do a lot of uh, interventional medicine. So all, uh, all of our injections are guided. So we do ultrasound guided intraarticular injections, tendon fenestration, um, and other types of procedures to manage uh, joint complaints or other musculoskeletal complaints non-operatively. We also make recommendations for physiotherapy, occupational therapy, any, any rehab recommendations essentially is, is what we um, would be looking at speaking with the patient about. And we can coordinate patient care with uh, other specialists that we, we think should kind of be on the team. So we work closely with neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, and neurology to manage our patients um, kind of as a, a whole team approach. And in physiatry, um, what what classes of medications are you generally prescribing or renewing for patients? Mm -hmm. So in our practice, we don't do a lot of kind of overall pain management. We will prescribe short-term analgesia for our patients, such as NSAIDs or Tylenol, but we do not prescribe uh, opioids, mainly because we find it difficult to follow up with the patients. So I'll often make medication recommendations and um, start the medication, give them a two or three week course, and then have them follow up with their family physician or another attending provider, whether they're um, enrolled in a chronic pain program, uh, to, to have that medication followed closely and titrated as needed. So we will prescribe um, gabapentin or pregabalin for neuropathic type pain. We will also look at spasticity management um, with certain types of medications. We do uh, Botox injections as well for spasticity management. So uh, again, with the medication piece, we will start the medications, but often ask them to follow up with their primary care provider to, um, to titrate or make any adjustments. Can you describe the particular practice setting that you're in? Yes, so I work with one supervising physician. Our practice focuses on a few different things. So we have a sport medicine kind of patient population where we're seeing high performing athletes on a regular basis. Then we see general musculoskeletal medicine. So um, Primarily, actually, we focus on hips. Uh, that's just where the kind of the practice has uh, led. We do a lot of hip injections, but also manage extra articular soft tissue uh, hip um, diagnoses. And then we'll see shoulders, elbows, ankles, kind of your, your general MSK presentations. We also do um, some inpatient work on the spinal cord injury unit. That happens about three to four months of the year. So I find that really interesting and rewarding. And we do spasticity clinic for our patients with spinal cord injury, cerebral palsy, other neurodegenerative disorders, and we do Botox injections and other um, allied healthcare team management for those patients. And just uh, for those that don't know, can you describe what spasticity is? Yes, yeah, so spasticity is an... Uh, 
comes from an upper motor neuron kind of insult, and it can be in patients with a number of different uh, diagnoses. So uh, cerebral palsy, spinal cord injury, stroke, uh, neurodegenerative disorders. And what we do is we'll see a patient in consult, and they can be anywhere from um, completely dependent for care to highly functioning and ambulatory. Our job is to come up with recommendations um, to allow them to function better in their community or in their setting. So whether that's helping their um, care providers do uh, dressing or bathing or allowing them to ambulate and play sports uh, more efficiently. So we look at the spectrum of kind of what we can offer them, including physiotherapy, occupational therapy, um, oral medications for spasticity management, and then Botox injections as well. Okay. And can you just list off a few common conditions that you see or that you come across in physiatry? Mm -hmm. So as I kind of mentioned, we see a wide variety of patients. So in terms of our musculoskeletal uh, patients, we're seeing a lot of um, hip pathology, whether that's osteoarthritis, labral pathology, or extra articular involvement. So gluteal tendinopathy, bursitis, um, and other kind of muscular conditions around the hip. Uh, In terms of shoulders, we see rotator cuff injuries, labral tears of the shoulder, um, and then we're looking at other tendinopathies tendinopathies of the knee, ankle, um, kind of elbow, really, really everything. Um, And we tend to treat those with kind of a a wide range of modalities depending on the patient. Um, So in in the sport population, we do more acute injury management and return to play from those injuries. Um, and then in our uh, spasticity population, we see a number of different diagnoses, but try to provide them with kind of an overall uh, approach to care that will allow them to improve and, and function better in their setting. And any rare conditions that you come across? Well, uh, both in our MSK population and in our um, spasticity population, I often come across things that um, I've never seen before, and they're kind of rare and wonderful, and I find it very challenging and interesting to see those patients. So um, anywhere from kind of genetic disorders that are causing um, muscle hypertrophy to uh, neurodegenerative conditions, uh, for example, Friedrich's Friedrich's ataxia or or other kind of diagnoses that are very rare, um, we sometimes see, and it's a good challenge for us to uh, manage them. and communicate with the other providers that are on the team to really um, be able to manage these patients well. How would you describe your role as a PA in this practice? Yeah, so my role is quite dynamic. Um, Depending on the day, I'm doing different things in clinic. So I will see both new consults and follow-up patients. Um, For a new consult, I will typically um, see them, review all of the imaging, do a physical exam, come up with an assessment and plan, and then review with my supervising physician. So the patient gets to meet him and um, kind of review what we had talked about. If there's any further questions, they're able to ask us at that time. In terms of follow-up patients, Um, I tend to know the patients quite well, so I'm seeing many follow-ups that we've either done intervention for and we want to see how that's going a few months later, or follow-ups from diagnostic imaging and reviewing that with the patients and again, coming up with a plan and reviewing with the team what the options are. Um, I do uh, interventions as well, so I'm doing ultrasound-guided injections. We have specific injection days where we see many patients, um, and so I've... uh, added that to my scope of practice after working with doctors and being trained by him as well as others who are doing these types of procedures. So become quite comfortable with ultrasound guided procedures and um, I enjoy that part of the practice. Uh, Otherwise, I'm kind of managing patient flow throughout the clinic. I'm liaising with the allied health team a lot of the time and trying to kind of provide that comprehensive care for our patients. Oftentimes I get feedback that the patients enjoy kind of seeing me because we get to spend a lot of time together and talk about their options and they often feel that things have been explained quite well whether it was you know I went through a model of the knee and showed them exactly where their injury was or wrote down the plan for them to go home with which um, I enjoy giving that to the patients and having them leave feeling good about their appointment. And how were you first oriented to the service? 
Uh, so my onboarding process was pretty um, quick because I had done an elective there. It actually was quite a, a seamless transition. I knew how the hospital worked um, from the administration side. I knew kind of what clinic flow looked like. So day one was kind of uh, just uh, up and running. And then after the first couple of months, you know, I I kind of settled into my role and figured out where I could be beneficial to the clinic and to my supervising physician. And we continue to make changes in the clinic in terms of how things are organized and what type of role I'm having. So I would say every four to six months we meet and come up with kind of next steps in terms of what we want to accomplish with my role specifically and review what has been going well and what we still need to work on. And what kind of mentoring and orientation have you received from your supervising physician, especially in the early days? Mm -hmm. So um, it was quite a steep learning curve because uh, physiatry is so specialized. Uh, coming from my background, I did have a good kind of base of knowledge coming in. But um, at the beginning, we worked really hand in hand and I was uh, reviewing every patient and um, <clears throat> working quite, quite closely with doctor. Oftentimes I would sit in on his appointments with patients and just understand what his decision-making process was and what different uh, types of patients we were seeing. So um, for the first probably six months, it was uh, a lot of learning. We would often debrief after clinic, review any questions that I had and any kind of new diagnosis that we saw that day as well as do some formal teaching sessions on um, specific conditions that we were seeing. I also attend physiatry rounds when I am able to, which helps in my kind of ongoing learning. And I find that physiatry conferences are excellent in um, continuing to engage in education and working with uh, the residents and students that, comes through, that come through our clinic is always a good way to continue to broaden my scope and, and move forward. Which physiatry conferences have you attended? So I've uh, attended some kind of specialty conferences. So um, ultrasound guided specificity management was actually here in Niagara with Dr. Khan um, last year. I attend the OMA Sport Med Conference uh, every year, which is always interesting hearing the updates on that. Hoping to go to CA PMNR this year in PEI as well, um, as well as a physiatry review course, which is a, an intensive week of kind of review of uh, physiatry across the board, which I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of gaining more experience. Um, I've also attended ultrasound-guided musculoskeletal conferences as well, put on by the Rheumatology Society, and then coming up uh, in uh, the states were hoping to go to an ultrasound guided musculoskeletal intervention course as well. So, always learning. <laughs> For those that aren't familiar, um, how is working with a PA similar or different than working with a resident? Yeah, so I, I think kind of describing us as permanent residents um, does have some truth to it. In the kind of early stages of your career, which I still consider that I'm in. Uh, I've been working for two years and our, our scope continues to broaden the more that you work in a specialty and with a specific supervising physician. So um, much like residents, we are able to see patients alongside the physician. We're reviewing cases. We're always engaged in education and learning. Mind you, residents are there for a very short amount of time and then they move on. So um, having a physician assistant in your practice is, is much like having that permanent resident and we're able to kind of cater to the clinic's needs specifically. So having worked with one supervising physician for the last two years, I've found that um, um, I've very much kind of uh, molded and kind of moved my practice in a way that will help um, the clinic, whether that's administration or seeing certain types of patients and taking kind of that workload and burden off of the physician. So the resident's often there to learn and uh, much like the resident, we're learning but we're also providing um, that kind of offload of work from the physician and taking uh, some of the patient load, some of the other workload off to allow them to provide um, kind of more quality care to their patients, but also have a better work-life balance in their practice. Any other benefits of adding a PA to a physiatry practice? 
So I, I think there are uh, a number of benefits for uh, any specialty that's looking at a physician assistant, specifically in physiatry, because it's so specialized and so um, busy, it, it's quite easy to integrate uh, the role of a PA into the clinic. So as I mentioned, I do kind of a number of different roles within our clinic, whether that's procedural, whether that's seeing new consults, seeing follow-ups, um, and that's able to offload the pressure on my supervising physician. So we work very well as a team and look at our day and say, okay, where can we, or what can we accomplish in this day and how can we make it beneficial for, for both of us for time management and efficiency. So I think that's really what a PA can offer is efficiency within the clinical uh, role. We have changed the way that clinics have ran since I've started. So whether that's changing the length of appointments or the number of patients that are being seen in a day or the type of patients that are being seen to allow the clinic to run a little bit smoother and allow my supervising physician to do the work that needs to be done during the, the day and not have to stay late afterwards. Do you do dictation, uh, medical documentation, medical legals, forms, return to work? Can you sort of describe the admin aspect of that? Yes, yeah, so essentially I've taken on kind of all of those things. So um, oftentimes I'm the, the one that's kind of liaising with patients or families or allied healthcare uh, team members to get things done like um, return to work forms or uh, disability forms and those types of things. That is often kind of something that I take on to, to take that burden off of my supervising physician, um, which he quite enjoys because uh, as we know, forms are not the uh, the, our favorite things to do, but it is a way that a PA can be beneficial in their role. And because I know the patients quite well, it's often easy for me to fill out those forms or make the call to someone to you know, figure out what needs to be done. Um, so I am doing quite a bit of that in clinic, which kind of comes naturally when you do take on the patient load. Mm -hmm. And um, do you work with medical directives? Yes, so I've implemented medical directives in uh, my place of work. So I was able to kind of pull from the current medical directives in different areas like ICU and uh, other outpatient locations to kind of make my own medical directives. So it was quite a process and took a number of months to implement. But now that they're there, it's um, very helpful to have that kind of written scope of practice to be able to refer back to both uh, in my ability to uh, um, do documentation within the clinic, but also order prescriptions, order diagnostic imaging, and those types of things. So everyone is aware of what I'm able to, to do, and it's in that document, so I find that helpful. Um, it sounds like you work primarily in outpatient, is that correct? Is, yes. there any, is it possible for PAs to work in inpatient or for EMG clinics, et cetera? Yes, so um, I'm primarily outpatient based. Uh, we do do uh, kind of short stints of inpatient management on the spinal cord injury ward as well. I feel that a PA would be very beneficial on an inpatient uh, rehabilitation unit, whether that's with uh, spinal cord injury, brain injury, amputees and prosthetics. We could function much like um, uh, the kind of that point person for the ward. So uh, similar to an internal medicine PA or an orthopedic surgery PA where you're managing those inpatients and then liaising with the um, MRP, I think a PA would be very valuable in that role to allow to offload some of the burden on the physicians to be there every day and rounding on patients and managing all of the kind of medical comorbidities that come with certain rehabilitation diagnoses. So our patients are medically stable but they're often quite complicated and require a lot of work and management as well as um, following them through their rehab process and getting them discharged home in a safe and effective manner so I feel that a PA would be very useful um, kind of in that role. Mm -hmm. And what do you enjoy about physiatry? Um, everything. <laughs> um, I honestly 
I really, really enjoy this patient population. I find it challenging. I find it interesting. I find it ever changing. Um, and I look forward to kind of learning more in the future and seeing where, um, where physiatry goes. It's still quite a new and growing specialty. And there's lots of research and evidence-based medicine coming out around certain uh, conditions that we see. So that part is exciting to me to, to know that I'll be involved in that in the future and continue to learn more and um, be excited about my work. And what do you find challenging uh, working in physiatry? What I find most challenging is the patients that we can't make a difference for. So in this specialty, we, we often have complicated patients and after exhausting a number of different treatment modalities, sometimes we have to have that conversation that you know we've done all that we can. And I find that very difficult because they are coming to you as the specialist, as kind of their last resort, last hope, last intervention. So that's a lot of kind of burden on us to provide that care and have the answers and sometimes we don't. So I find that piece kind of difficult and often uh, am left feeling like I wish I could do more. And that just motivates me to continue to be educated and, and do kind of provide the best care I can to my patients. Can you sort of compare um, what it takes for the training for someone to become a physiatrist versus training to be a PA in physiatry? Yeah, so um, when you go to medical school and um, get accepted into physiatry residency, that's a five-year residency. So within their five years, they're doing rotations in a number of different specialties and locations. They get a lot of training and experience in um, rehab-specific uh, um, medicine, whether that's with oncology, whether that's cardiac rehab, whether that's uh, pure spinal cord injury or uh, stroke rehab. Um, so th the residents spend five years getting to, to do and learn all of those things. Um, whereas as a PA, you're trained as a generalist after two years of education in the Mac PA program, um, when you're being didactic, when you're being clerkship, you are kind of out in the workplace and uh, working. So in those first couple of years, the scope is quite small because especially with a limited um, background in a certain specialty, it's going to take a little bit to kind of understand the common presentations and the different uh, treatment modalities out there. Um, I found that coming from my background in kinesiology and sports and spinal cord injury, I had a very good base going into my role as a physiatry PA and I was able to pull from my previous education and experience to allow me to really kind of fully engage um, immediately with our patient population. Now, if, you're, if you are coming from a, a limited background, it's still doable and there's um, it really it comes from the support of your supervising physician or team to allow you to continue to learn and be integrated into the practice. Are you involved in teaching or precepting PA students or other medical learners? Yes, and that's something that I actually quite enjoy. So I've had a number of longitudinal placements, uh, sorry, longitudinal placement students um, come and observe for the half day. And I always recommend physiatry as a placement, whether it's uh, a half day or a full elective, to any PAs that are interested in family medicine, emergency medicine, orthopedics, neurology, because we really see it all. And I find that um, our musculoskeletal kind of uh, teaching in the PA program and in the medical program is quite limited so anytime you're able to get that experience in a clinical setting and review your history taking your differentials your physical exam I find that that can be very helpful for students going forward so I enjoy having students and teaching and kind of imparting what I've learned as well as my PA journey so kind of showing them how a PA can work in this type of clinic I find is rewarding uh, for me. And are you involved in any research or quality improvement projects? Uh, currently I am not, but that is something that my supervising physician and I talk often about and something that I'm looking to pursue in the future, specifically looking at the implementation of a physician assistant in physiatry and how that's changed our practice, whether we're 
we're looking at um, time to follow up, time to consult, or number of patients seen. That's something that I've been working on, kind of gathering that information, as well as research in our clinical population. So I'm uh, looking forward to um, being involved in that in the future. And how do you see your practice changing over the next few years? Yeah, so th that's a that's a hard question to answer because, um, as I've said, the, the last two years has been quite dynamic, and we often have been changing my role every. Um, four to six months implementing new um, types of clinics or have me seeing new types of patients. So uh, I really don't know how to answer that, but I will say that um, I'm constantly looking for kind of the next step and how to continue to improve things. As a physician assistant, you're rarely um, stagnant and you, you shouldn't really ever be kind of just comfortable in one place because you're always looking at improving the patient experience, improving the efficiency of clinic, and and how to um, continue to grow in your role. What resources did you use for on-the-job learning? So um, I use a number of different resources in my in my current role. A lot of it being um, online resources as well as textbooks that um, have actually been recommended to me by residents and uh, my supervising physician other people that I've worked with, whether that's guidance on ultrasound guided procedures and referring to the text or online resources. Um, and I find that the conferences and educational opportunities are, are great at both uh, enhancing my learning, but also you come out with a number of different resources and options for going forward. So I really kind of have a, a large collection of things that I use on a daily basis to reference. So uh, are you happy with your decision to become a PA? Yes, I, I absolutely love my role as a physician assistant. I find that um, I'm able to provide uh, quality care to patients while also impacting kind of the clinical experience and um, life of my supervising physician and I really get to do that dynamic role of being a part of a larger team that is able to work together to work efficiently and um, and really in the end it's about that patient-centered care. So having the ability to make a difference to provide patient-centered care to all of our different types of patients has been very rewarding for me. So I really enjoy my role as a PA and the um, kind of diverse patient population that I see and also the many different roles that I have in clinic as well as looking at uh, where to go in the future. Yeah, and any tips for students struggling with PA versus MD of which to pursue? Hmm. So I, I always say to students who ask me, well, you know, I don't really know, should I apply to medical school or should I apply to the physician assistant program? I try to explain the difference between the two. And I, I say to students that if you think that you want to be a, a practicing physician and that's your passion, then absolutely um, follow that goal. Uh, the physician assistant program is not a stepping stone and it's not an alternative to being a physician. It truly is a different profession and a different role in healthcare. Um, so I, I think you really have to do a lot of exploring in terms of what that means. And I advise students to talk to practicing physician assistants, shadow them if you can to understand what the role is in clinical practice. And now that can vary across different specialties. So PAs are doing kind of a number of different things in their clinical practice. So the, the options are broad, but I recommend that they really kind of explore what that what that difference is in the clinical role and and um, figure out what's what's best for them and what they want in their future okay and any tips for PA students that are hoping to pursue physiatry um, so I would say that if if you're a student that you're, and you're interested in physiatry get as much exposure to it as you can whether that's doing longitudinal placements setting up a clerkship elective or just speaking to physician assistants who are involved in the specialty or other healthcare providers that work in physiatry to truly understand you know what the different types of physiatry um, kind of divisions are and how you think you would be implemented into that practice. And I found that the best thing for me was doing the elective and placement there to understand um, what it was all about. I've always had an interest in um, 
international medicine and I actually spoke to a few PA students who had gone abroad in previous years to different locations. So uh, first of all I had to figure out if it was feasible uh, for a number of different reasons, financially if the program would allow it. And then I really just wanted to get that experience to see how other areas of the world, uh, what healthcare is like there. And I wanted to allow that to um, benefit my practice coming back to Canada and I, I found 